Great is your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your peace that is surpassing. In a crooked and perverse nation, in a time when evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, Lord, we have peace in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of crisis, war, pestilence, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your word, Lord, that you've already settled in the heavens, that you've declared the end from the beginning, that counsel that shall stand forever. God, be glorified today, be magnified today, be thou exalted in all the earth. Everything that has breath is to praise your name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue must confess that you are Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we have this express opportunity this day that we have entered into these gates with thanksgiving. We have this privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy in this time of need. And Lord, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you. We need your power, we need the healing virtue to flow. We need, we need the anointing that destroys the yoke. We need the spirit of the living God to quicken those that are dead in their sins. God be magnified in Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks, amen and amen. Those who wait, those who wait. Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait. The prophet Isaiah lived in a nation, the nation of Israel. He lived there during good times of prosperity, but he also lived during the reign of one of the most wicked of the kings, Manasseh. And when a person has lived in relative peace and prosperity most of their lives, when days of judgment or wrath from God comes to visit, it can be very disheartening and it can be very difficult to endure. Nevertheless, Isaiah, much like all of the other prophets in the Old Testament, he had the unenviable task, the assignment to speak the oracles of God to a people who would not listen, to a people who were stiff-necked. These are the descriptions that are in the word of God. The people who would not turn from their wickedness, that wickedness which was about to usher in the judgment of God upon that people. They were living in good times. They lived in the good times of King Uzziah, King Hezekiah. Oh, the good times were rolling. And they thought that judgment would never come to them. But as we know, both of those divided kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, both eventually went into captivity. The northern kingdom consisting of the 10 northern tribes never returned and they are still dispersed throughout the nations. They never returned. 
the southern kingdom went into Babylon for 70 years as punishment for their multitudes of sins and rebellion against God. The prophecies of Isaiah covered both the times of which he lived and also the times which will be even future to our day. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, Isaiah, through the words of the Lord, through the mouth of the Lord, speaks these words to his people. God wants his people to know, even though hard times are coming your way, even though difficult times are coming your way, I want you to know that I have never left you. I will never forsake you. God never forsakes his people. And first of most of all, we never, we should never forget this. There is always a remnant. There will always be a remnant. So he speaks these words, Isaiah 40, verse number one. He says, comfort. Yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice says, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? Say this to them, Isaiah, remind them this fact about the lives of humanity, the frailty, the body in which they live, the time, the season. Remind them that all flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but guess what? The word of the Lord stands forever. And let me, let me just tell you, if you don't have it, if you don't have it, if you don't have it, you're gonna have to have it. You're gonna have to have it. You say, what is it that I'm gonna have to have if I don't have it? Now, some of you have it. I hope all of you have it. Everybody has it to some degree. I need some more of it. Before I tell you what it is, I can tell you right now, I need some more of it. And my wife will tell you I need some more of it. Patience. Y'all already knew. You already knew. You already knew. You already knew. It has been said that patience is a virtue. Those who possess this virtue of patience said to be able to wait without being agitated in the process. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still. I see a long line at the grocery store. <laughs> Traffic light holds too long. The light. Patience. Those who wait. 
Patience is a quality, the definition says, of being patient. It's the bearing of provocation. In other words, when, even when you are provoked, annoyed, mm -hmm. when misfortune happens, yes. when pain comes, oh, you can endure without complaint, mm -hmm. without losing your temper, oh, being irritated, some of us get hungry, and that's all it takes. All it takes. <laughs> Just a little hungry. Yep. We call it being hangry. <laughs> Patience is an ability, a willingness to suppress restlessness or annoyance when you are confronted with delay. <laughs> to be quiet. This is the dic dictionary definition, y'all. Steady perseverance, even-tempered diligence. Oh, God, help me, help me, help me. Not help, help me. Waiting, waiting, waiting is one of the most difficult things all of us are forced to do even when we detest every moment of it. And again, if you're lacking in patience in waiting on the Lord, I suggest that you buckle down. As a matter of fact, last week we asked the question, how long? Oh, it won't be long. Now it seems like it seems like it's a long time until it happens. Those 120 years Noah was preaching, oh, it was a long time. Noah got mocked. I mean, I, I know he got mocked and ridiculed. What is this fool doing? But when that 120 years was up and God shut the door, oh, that 120 years seemed like it was... When God's judgment comes, when it comes. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We got to wait. This is why, see, God is so patient. He's so, oh, he's so patient. Long suffering, the Bible says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come. For those of you who may not be aware, we are almost assuredly, I'm, I'm convinced, I'm persuaded, in the perilous times that the word of the Lord spoke to us about. As a matter of fact, turning your Bibles to 2 Timothy, quickly to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And let me tell you, you're going to need patience if you're going to persevere in perilous times. The Bible says, know this, Timothy, verse number one, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, how do we know that perilous times are here, that we're living in them? Well, the description that the word of God gives us, let's see if it matches what's happening in our world and in our culture. For men will be lovers of themselves. Selfishness, self-centeredness. Me, 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 me. Love, lovers of money. Bolsters, proud, blasphemers. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pleasure 
rather than lovers of God. They will have a form of godliness, but deny the power. Paul says, from such, turn away. These are the kind of people, Paul said, that creep into houses, make captives of gullible women who laid it down or loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Are we living in perilous times? You're going to need some patience. You're going to need to wait. For the early and the latter rain, God has patience. He's waiting. He's waiting. What assuredly makes for perilous times is the upheaval of unrighteous behavior. It is in perilous times when we are exposed to danger. What kind of danger? Grave danger. Destruction. Injury. Losses. And any clear thinking person of reason and logic looking at what is transpiring in our world today in our culture today must come to the reality of the perils that we are facing. Never in my memory have I seen so many soup lines. People standing in lines because, and, 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 and sometimes it's not because they don't have the money. Sometimes it's because it's just not there. We have crises that are mounting up and there are those who are forecasting that this is just the beginning. The Bible speaks about these things. The Bible speaks about these things. We are living in a time of peril, danger. The politicians will promise you solutions. Corporations will offer all kinds of remedies. Psychology will offer you therapy. Pharmaceuticals <laughs> offer you therapeutics and addiction. Religion will offer you self-righteousness. None of these will ever solve the real problem. And few dare to even say what the real problem is. But I'm going to say it. The real problem is the sin problem. We have a sin problem. We have a very serious sin problem. And it may not be, but we may be near the pinnacle of a very egregious sin problem. Our cup is filling up and, 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 and perhaps about to overflow in the breath of the wickedness that is on par with the, the doomed cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. We are approaching that. We are approaching that. And it's not just homosexuality or same sex or LBG, whatever it is, all the alphabet. That's not the only problem we have. Greed is pervasive. Murder. Bloodshed. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. Every law, every law of God is being violated. Every one of them. We need not enumerate all of our collective sins and transgressions. 
against the holiness and righteousness of God. But I will dare say this, that the most egregious, and please, let me, let me just pause for a second. Please understand that God can handle sins. God can handle sins. He tolerates all kinds of sins. The real issue happens when we become proud and arrogant and refuse to repent, refuse to re return. That's what, that's what you, that's when we get into real trouble. God will forgive all kinds of sins. And Jesus said it. All manner of sins will be forgiven except for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. God will forgive sins. That is not the problem. It's the, oh my God, the pride and the arrogance. You're going to flaunt it in the face of God. In defiance. Against the rule of God, against the authority of God. That's when we get in very serious trouble, and that's what I'm afraid of. For this nation. We are arrogant. We are proud. We are haughty. Oh, God knows how to bring you down. Oh. Some, some, a lot of people took a, a nice big hit the last week or so. Last couple of weeks. Their 401k became a 201k. Some of them came a 101k. And all of their hope. Hmm. Hmm. There's no question that we're living in a paganism of prophetic biblical accuracy. The Bible is so dead on accurate, y'all. And it details for us the kind of days that these would be, that would turn out to be. And, and lo and behold, here we are. God said, my word will not return unto me void. See, I've already declared the end. For, I know everything. There's nothing, nothing that escapes from God. The things that may be known of God have been revealed to us. Romans chapter number one is eternal power, Godhead. Clearly be revealed to all of us, leaving all of us. No, no one has an excuse, no one. He's made himself manifest to all. The Bible said the grace of God that brings salvation appears to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. You know, we know, we all know. God's mercy is far above what we deserve. Oh, so far above what we deserve. His long suffering, his long suffering continues spectacularly. It's amazing. Because if he were to put me in charge, which you don't want me to put in front of me, I, got a, I already got, I told you, I got a list. None of y'all on the list, by the way. But I got a list of people. But I'll be like the, the <laughs> you know how the disciples said, Lord, can we call down fire from heaven? Yeah. Y'all got a list. Y'all got some lists, too. You don't? I'm glad, I hope you don't, really. And I hope I'm not on it. But God's long suffering, I, 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 I continue to marvel. I continue to marvel. Because I, 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 when I look, I say, how long, Lord, how long? How much worse can it get? Can it get worse than this? And I say, I say, well, yes, it actually can. Yes. It can. Yes. And God will still be gracious. God will still be merciful. God will still be saving. God will still be knocking at the doors of hearts. His tolerance, his, his restraint, 
unparalleled, unparalleled, nothing like it. Because his goodness and his prosperity extends to all. As a matter of fact, as you may be aware, some of you are aware of the Old Testament, people like Job, the psalmist, and others, they actually lamented how the wicked prospered. How they seem to have no problems, no trouble. Job said their children grow up and are happy. I look over there, they just having a grand old time. They seem to have plenty of money. Yeah. Everything's going great for them. Yes. Their cattle are healthy. Mm -hmm. Everything's great. What in the world? And the psalmist said, my foot almost slipped. Oh. Woo! Yeah. Until I saw, saw their end. Yes. You see, prosperity in the midst of wickedness is unsustainable. It is righteousness that exalts a nation. Sin, the Bible says, is a reproach. So when the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness and unrighteousness, please hear this. Sometimes the righteous will suffer loss along with the wicked. When the judgment of God came to Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all know Lot went in wealthy. He came out with nothing. Y'all know that? He didn't drag all those cattle, all those sheep. Remember, he and Abraham had to split up because they had so much between them. Abraham, Abraham said, if you go to the right, I go to the left. If you go to the left, I go to the right. Lot looked over and saw Sodom. Said, oh, I'm going out all that green grass. Oh, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. I'm going that way. He came in with wealth. He left out with nothing. Oh, it's a precursor of this. Listen, when God takes us out of this world, you're not taking one nickel. Not one penny. So you might as well start unloading now. Your, your closets, you can't even, you can, you, you, you're spending 25 extra minutes trying to figure out what to wear. If you part those dresses down to just two, I wore this one last Sunday. I wear this one this Sunday. That's blasphemy there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When judgment came, Lot had to leave everything. When God's judgment comes, all the idols, all the treasures, all the earthly treasures. Mm -mm. Many nations and civilizations that have been judged already for their futile idolatry. And yet to this present day, to this present moment nations today going down the very same path of futility Isaiah 40 again verse 15 the whole, behold the Bible says the nations are as a drop in the bucket they are counted as the small dust on the scales can you imagine that dust the nations of this world. Look at, look at all the nations of this world. He said, the United States is just a grain of, just a speck of dust on the scale? Yes. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing. Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beasts sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? This is, this is the futility of man. Listen to what he says. The workman molds an image. This is idolatry. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold. The silversmith casts silver chains on it. 
And whoever, now those who can't afford the gold and the silver idol, they go out, listen to what the Bible says, the one who is impoverished, he doesn't have the money to afford one of these idols. You know, the Lamborg Lamborghini, the Maserati. So you have to go by a little forward. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution, he chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter, that will not fall over. Have you not known, God says? Have you not heard? You know better. You know better. Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth when he will also blow on them. All God has to do is breathe, just. I saw a video of a house that was picked up by the wind. A tornado, I suppose it was. Picked it up. The whole, the whole house just picked it up and tossed it. That's a win. Win that God made, win that God commands. Now, what happens if God were to blow with his breath? He will also blow on them and they will wither. And the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. Oh, the utter futility of idolatry, man-made idols. And again, it is not as though man does not know better. It's not, it's not like we don't know, we know. But they willfully change the truth of God into a lie, the Bible says, and worship the creature more than the creator. Let me finish. Verse 25, Isaiah 40. To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created all these things. I did, I did. The Lord says. Who brings out their hosts by number. He calls them all by name. Do you know all the stars have been named? I hope y'all didn't pay any, you know, that was popular some years ago. I don't know if they're still doing that. They're selling a star, you can buy, they name a star and you pay these people money. They, people still doing that? Y'all remember that? Y'all don't remember that? Yeah, they would name a star after you. You should pay, pay money for that. I guess they, I guess people didn't fall for that anymore. <laughs> But that, yes, that was very popular years ago. But they already been named by God. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might, the strength of his power. Not one is missing. So why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, that God doesn't see, that God doesn't know? And my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, 
The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint. He does not get weary. He does not get tired. The Bible says he never sleeps nor he slum nor does he slumber. His understanding is unsearchable. Unsearchable. And he gives power to the weak. To those who have no might. The Bible says he increases strength. The youths shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Patience is what we need. We must have it. You Listen, and I'm pray, I pray, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to pray, Lord, increase, increase my patience. I have patience for certain things, but there are a lot of other things I don't have patience for. But I'm certainly, if nothing else, I'm going to wait on the Lord. My patience may run thin in other areas, but I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to put my trust in man. I'm not going to put my confidence in man, in institutions. Oh, no. You got to have patience in these perilous times because the Bible says the strength will come to those who wait on the Lord. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, we glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation is what produces perseverance or patience. Perseverance, character, character, hope, and hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that is given to us. God dispenses his power to the weak. He gives strength to those without might. So in everything, we need to give thanks. Good times, bad times, all my appointed times, Job said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Now, waiting doesn't mean you're just standing idle. I'm standing here. I'm just standing here. I'm not moving. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, just standing. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, most of you, I don't know how much longer we'll be able to afford to go to a restaurant with a waiter. <laughs> but when you go to a restaurant, and the waiter waits on you, he doesn't just stand there by your table. She doesn't just stand there by your table. Waiting doesn't mean that they're standing idle. Just standing. Say, oh, sir, can I, you gonna take my order? That's not a waiter. A waiter moves. A waiter serves. A waiter is active. A waiter is participating. A waiter is there for you. Listen, we are here to serve the living God. We are here in service. Amen. So in our waiting, oh, we're going to keep the faith. Oh, we're going to preach the word and be instant, in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine because the time has already come. The Bible says when they will not endure sound doctrine. It's already here. But I'm going to wait on the Lord. And guess what? Every waiting moment. Listen, God sees it. He knows it. 
Amen. And when the righteous cry, God hears. He sees the tears. He knows the pain. He knows the, he knows the anxiety, the fears, the doubts, all of that. He can handle all of it. Yes, but I, I'm not going to, listen, I refuse to put my trust and my hope and my confidence in man. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Some of y'all got some, some I, hope, I pray that you don't. Maybe you, maybe you don't. Hopefully you pray. Oh, my God, please don't. Please don't have your hope in man. Please. Please don't have your hope in man's ability to bring peace. Sustaining prosperity. Because again, the problem is a sin problem. Listen, God's blessings follow obedience. If we obey, we prosper. If we disobey, even in that, there is in the mercy of God, he, let, he still allows prosperity. But at some point, he will turn it off and judgment will come. We are living in a perilous time. And if you're going to persevere through whatever lies ahead, I don't know what lies ahead. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I can guarantee you this, though. If we don't repent, it's going to get worse, far worse. But those who wait will have the strength. Those who wait, the Bible says, will soar as the eagle. Mount up. See, eagle flies above the storm. He flies into it, and then he yes. above the storm. And when everyone else is troubled, when everyone else is shaken, you can fly like an eagle, soar like an eagle. Amen. Above the storms, above the troubles, above the tribulations, above the persecution, above the insanity. The madness, the devil wreaking havoc everywhere. Soar like an eagle. Amen. Mount up. They, this, but this is only for those who wait now on the Lord. The Bible says you will run without getting weary. Oh, yeah, keep on running. Walk and not faint. That's a, listen, this is an exclusive promise only to those who wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Where does the strength come from? It comes from the Lord. And he has an unlimited supply. It's not like oil spigots, oil wells might run dry. Mm. God has an unlimited supply of strength because all power, all might, everything is in his hands. He has declared the end from the beginning and his counsel will stand forever. What does the scripture say? His understanding is unsearchable. Paul put it this way. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? He has no counselor. He has no equal. Those who wait, God has strength for whatever happens in these perilous times in which we are living. I mean, we can have the confidence Listen, I am, I'm more confident than I was yesterday, than I was last week, than I was two weeks ago. I, no matter what happens in the markets, amen. I, I don't, listen, you know what? I got so much more to say, but y'all don't have the patience for it, so I'm going <laughs> to... I know you don't have the patience for it. <laughs> but listen, let me just say this real quick. When the famine came in the land of, well, all of the land of Egypt, God already had made a way. Yes. He sent Joseph ahead. Yes. 
God all listen, provision is already made. It's already there. You say, well, is it in my money that I've saved up? No. No. Listen, God doesn't need any of that. He doesn't need anything from when the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, going through the barren places, the dry places, no water. Where did the water got? Moses speak to the rock. He commanded the quail to just come up out of this. Just come up, come up, come up, come up. God doesn't need our help. He's already made provision. All you got to do is wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Father, we thank you for your promises, your promises, your promises. Every one of them are yea and amen. Every one of them. None of your words shall fall to the ground. Heaven and earth will pass away. Lord, we're standing on your promises. Your word. The righteous never forsaken. His seed not begging bread. Thank you, Lord, that you shall supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. Even though the supermarket shelves may run bare. The people are scrambling. God, you can speak. And it is done. You can command. And it stands for, because you are the creator. You made all these things. Our hope is not in man. Our hope is in you. Our eyes are upon you, oh God. And we're going to wait on you. We're going to trust in you. We're not going to lean to our own understanding. In our own wisdom. But Lord, we're going to set our eyes on you. Fix our gaze on you. Mark the perfect man. Now unto you, you, O oh Lord, who are able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Even before, Lord, even before whatever lies ahead comes to pass, we are already confident. We are already assured. Because you've already spoken. We walk by faith. We live by faith. Be thou magnified in your people everywhere. God, God be glorified. For you are doing a marvelous thing in the earth. And we thank you now. And we praise you now. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus.